Hey, it's Dana. Welcome back to Mirror Mirror. And if you're new here, hi, I'm an independent music artist. I write, record and produce my own music. And I also film so many series here on my YouTube. And this one is all about relationships because they are the key to life. So for this video, we're going to talk about something that I've literally spent the majority of my life dealing with, and that is codependency and enmeshment. And because I have dealt with it so, so much, I have started to kind of analyse how and why. You'll probably notice in a lot of my videos that the things that I talk about, I'm always trying to figure out where it stems from and how it was created, how I started doing it, like how the, beha the behaviour or the habit was formed and like trace it back to its roots basically because I don't know why this is just how I end up doing things and then things start to make a lot of sense to me and for this I have started to realise that it actually starts usually in childhood but not always but definitely for me in childhood <laughs> and it was a form of survival mode like I developed it in childhood as a form of survival mode because it was the way for me to survive basically and get my needs met as a child so for me and my own understanding of what codependency is it's like putting somebody else's needs before your own also kind of like people pleasing but basically just attaching or relying on or you know like almost like an energy vampire in a way just needing that other person to make you feel safe or needing their validation needing their approval you know just needing their energy as a way to survive this is why i've heard a lot of people say that um narcissists and codependents are the same thing but just different ends of the spectrum and i actually kind of understand it now because it is a little bit of a narcissistic type of behavior to really suck the life out of other people and rely on them so much in order to get your needs met that like you're kind of draining them in a way but it does come from a a form of survival mode like you're not doing it to control them or to manipulate or like it's not necessarily an intentional act of violence or an intentional act of spite it can very much come from a low self-esteem standpoint whereas i feel like narcissism can be very deliberate and like trying to manipulate but for me codependency is more using similar tactics but it's from a different standpoint of like a complete lack of power a lack of self-esteem a lack of you know knowing yourself a lack of confidence and all of that and then just kind of using other people as a way to make yourself feel good or as a way to survive as a way to function sometimes you know like it's a way to basically not die <laughs> and as children obviously um like we rely on our parents for everything literally from food to shelter to safety to absolutely everything so sometimes when you're a child depending on what your circumstances are you can develop codependency as a way to get your needs met and it can very well be those basic needs like survival and like physical survival but then it can also be emotional survival so it could be as a way to get love or a way to get approval or a way to even be acknowledged in your household depending on what the dynamic is like you know so we can start to people please and we can start to do things that we know the other person will like because then they'll accept us then they'll acknowledge us then they'll give us love and when you start doing that as a child and then you grow up and you like start getting into romantic relationships and different kind of friendship dynamics, those characteristics and those traits can continue. And this is something that definitely happened for me. It starts to continue into your adult relationships. And then, you know, you can get in a lot of toxic situations and you can also be the toxic one. And it can just become such an enmeshed 
relationship where you don't know the difference between your energy and theirs, your needs and theirs, your beliefs and theirs, like it just becomes so intertwined and also it can become quite enmeshed in trauma, like you can kind of trauma bond with people and relate to them based on your traumatic experiences and it not be an empowering connection whatsoever, you know, it can be very stuck in that trauma and not elevating or growing or trying to change and evolve. So there's just so many ways that this can happen and I'm starting to understand for myself that it definitely stemmed in childhood and it was a form of survival mode and it's taken quite a lot of effort to get out of that and to stop those behavioural patterns because obviously we program our mind with this shit, especially ages zero to seven, you're in theta state, like your brain is literally in theta state, so you're absorbing everything that you see, you know, and you don't really have a logical mind to actually analyse what you're doing and to think about it and think about the consequences. That's not really there when we're that young, between zero and seven, so then when you become an adult and you've got all of these habits that you've developed it can be quite difficult to rewire that and change that and that's definitely a part of shadow work <laughs> and a part of the wonderful thing that we're trying to do especially if you're watching this video so i do think understanding where it stems from allows you to stop punishing yourself for it because as children we have to survive and we do that in whatever way we can do you know what I mean? So sometimes we take on these negative traits and they're not necessarily benefiting us as adults, but as children it served a purpose. It helped us to get our needs met in the way that we needed because we didn't know how to communicate our feelings. We didn't know how to communicate boundaries or what we wanted and what we needed. You know, this is why a lot of children lash out and stuff because they don't know how to communicate and they don't know how to express their emotions in a healthy way. And that's something that adults have to teach them. And if you're not taught, you're not gonna know. And then you go into adulthood and then you soon realize that your behavior is not actually beneficial because of how other people react and respond to you. So it's then a case of literally reparenting yourself and figuring out healthier ways to express yourself and healthier ways to get your needs met without having to manipulate and without having to people please and like do things that other people want of you and that other people expect of you in order to get your needs met. It's being like, okay, no, I don't have to do this thing that they're gonna want because that thing doesn't feel authentic to me. I'm only doing that as a way to get accepted or as a way to receive love and acknowledgement. And actually it doesn't feel that good. Like, yeah, the temporary exchange of love might feel okay. It might give you a little bit of a dopamine hit, but what you're actually doing, like the um, behavior that you're actually carrying out doesn't feel authentic. So even though you're, re you're receiving a little bit of validation, it kind of feels a bit empty because you're having to do things that don't sit right with you in order to receive it, if that makes sense. I mean, you could say this with so many things, even like posting on social media or working a job that you don't like and all of that you might receive a bit of money but if the job doesn't feel fulfilling and it makes you miserable then it's not really worth it so it's kind of the same thing in a sense of like if you're having to do certain things to please other people just to receive a little bit of kindness or a little bit of love then it can start to feel really empty and I am definitely for myself at the point where I just can't do that shit anymore like I cannot <laughs> physically bring myself to do things that just don't feel good, that don't sit right with me, that just, you know, they're not in alignment with my truth and I just, I'm done with people pleasing and trying to get my needs met through that way because when you stop doing that and you actually start walking in your authenticity, you'll realise that people that actually resonate with who you really are and the truth of you will start pouring love into you effortlessly anyway and you won't have to do things that don't even resonate with you to receive that love you know it will be a more um authentic energy exchange and a much more high vibrational en energy exchange and it will just feel completely different like completely different so there is so much possibility for you to actually get your needs met in a way that doesn't stifle you and that doesn't shrink parts of who you are but obviously this takes a lot of 
um, practice and a lot of compassion towards yourself because like we were children when we learned this and even if you learn it as an adult it still doesn't matter you can still have compassion towards yourself for doing whatever it takes to experience some love because that is a human need and we can't unneed that need you know everybody wants love everybody wants connection and to feel like they belong and to feel like they can relate to other people and sometimes we end up stooping to certain levels in order to achieve that and I'm just learning that we don't actually have to live in survival mode anymore you can be your authentic self and thrive and receive connection at the same time and even though it can be scary especially if you're going against cultural norms you're going against your family or you're going against things that you grew up in and you're having to break those generational curses. It can definitely be scary and it might even feel isolating, to be honest. But as you hold strong in your truth and you stand your ground and you're like, I'm not tolerating this shit anymore. This is who I am and I have to be that. It will start to shift, you know. Something I literally just watched while I was doing my makeup and stuff. I watched a Mariam Hasner video in her new Elf Mystery School because I am a subscriber member person in that thing <laughs> on her website and I love it and I watched her timeline jumping video and she was talking about like uh, most people want the outside world to change with them like they want that to change first let me start that again that did not make sense most people want the external reality to change before they believe it's being possible and what I'm learning now is it's the opposite way around the way that consciousness the way that the universe works is like you have to believe it you have to feel it and know it internally and then act accordingly in your external reality and then the external starts to shift with you and it's exactly the same for attracting um like relationships that you want and being able to be your authentic self you have to own who you are first before people will embrace who you are you know like you have to stand firmly in who that is first and then the right people will embrace who you are and they'll resonate and be drawn to who you are because it's you that they've been looking for you know those people have been waiting for you to step into your power you just didn't know it because they weren't in your life yet but in a soul agreement level in a soul level they've been waiting for this you know and your soul has been waiting for this too because now you get to have these incredible interactions with all of these people that actually resonate and that you actually like can grow together and thrive together and experience your soul mission together and honestly I'm experiencing this for myself now finally and it's just such a game changer and now that I'm like backtracking and looking backwards to see exactly what happened and how I got here I'm like oh <laughs> I had to make the changes first and then the people walk in you know you have to cut off the old people first then the new can walk in and yeah it's the same with our beliefs we need to change them first before the external reality catches up with us so yeah, I hope this video was helpful. Definitely WhatsApp me or DM me on Instagram or comment down below if you want to discuss it further, if you have any questions or any video ideas. And everything about me is in the description box below. Links to my music, links to my phone number, links to my crystal jewellery. This is my handmade jewellery that I ship worldwide with free UK shipping as well. And yeah, just everything else is about, about me is in the description box below. And I hope you're having the best week and I will see you in the next video. To hide me something, to spice becoming, yeah, my heart.